Today's video is a guest presentation by Nikolai Scheyer. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, Nikolai. Anyway, he's a longtime friend of the channel and his printer completely embodies the spirit of the channel, design, prototype, test, just constantly iterating to make the tech better. And it's a really uh, impressive DIY project and I think you guys are gonna love it. But stay tuned uh, after his presentation. There's a couple of housekeeping items uh, for the channel here that I think you'll find interesting. So let's check out Nikolai's printer. Hi there, uh, my name is Nikolai, or uh, Nick, uh, how most people call me. Uh, this is my 3D printer. My Tavo Little Monster, well, it, it used to be a Tavo Little Monster. By now, only only the frame is original. <laughs> this metal bracket, the, the spool holder, the power supply enclosure. Um, a couple of the screws, probably. But uh, other than that, it's, it's all uh, completely custom. That's uh, the panel do a seven inch screen. I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that in a, in a couple of weeks uh, until I have the the Raspberry Pi, which runs uh, together with the do it three mini properly set up. It's right now sitting in this enclosure that I designed myself. Something yours if you if you want to use it yourself. The the top cover here uh, is easily removable. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be easily removable and fits a 140 millimeter fan. The duet sits here, and as you can see, uh, in there, underneath the duet, there's actually uh, a duct, sort of, and the, the sides here, don't know how well you can see that, but the, the sides here are, uh, they're, they're enclosed. Um, so the fan actually sucks in air through those side vents underneath the duet, which cools it quite nicely. The Raspberry Pi sits on the back of the touchscreen over here. Yeah, wiring is kind of messy, but <laughs> I bet it's the same with your printers. Let's have a look at the print head. Where do I start? Um, I'm using the, the Duet Smart Effector um, together with the... Uh, is it carbon fiber? I'm not sure. Uh, they, they came from Hawaii, actually. <laughs> uh, they're, they're nice. Uh, I can, they're, they're magnetic. I can, I can pop off the, the print head quite easily. It's great for maintenance. Then there is the Mosquito on there, the Mosquito Holland, and uh, this is a custom part cooling solution here. Well, yeah, no, it is custom. The, the bracket I designed myself, again, on Thingiverse. Um, I'm using two, two brass tubes here where I squeeze the, um, the opening a little bit with pliers. PTFE tube, and those is, that's aquarium tubing, I don't know. Um, goes up there in a spiral to uh, this air pump here. Um, it's suspended to prevent vibrations and that's a muffler. I uh, found that on Thingiverse, great print. Um, I'd, I'll try to find the link, uh, but this actually greatly decreases the noise from the pump and I'm really happy with the cooling. So this is a print I did a couple hours actually ago and, and all of this is, is bridged actually. So, so this was uh, printed like this. Um, and yeah, I have no idea how well you can see that, but this is, it's pretty good. If, if I try, I can, I can get my fingernail to, um, pick up the, the lowest layer a little bit, but I'm, I'm happy with it. <laughs> I guess that's all that matters. So, uh, next up on the print head, um, we have uh, the extruder mechanism. So this is a, uh, a flex drive extruder. Um, it's quite old. I think I've been using it for almost two years now. Um, works well. Um, retractions and, and especially jerk values need to, be, need to be in the low side. So, oops. Um, so it's, uh, it's, I can't actually print that fast with it, like especially intricate models where there's a lot of retractions and, and sharp corners and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm actually working on a, on a replacement for that. Um, the top is, uh, again, <laughs> designed by myself, the, the gray part. And it was supposed to accept a Duet laser sensor, a laser filament sensor, but I got really inconsistent results, so it's not on there anymore. An interesting detail, uh, the, the drive shaft, which is in this purple sleeve, goes to this motor. And, and as you can see, 
it is swivel mounted. So as the printer moves, uh, at least up and down or left and right, um, this can follow. <laughs> and I only realized this like, like a week or two ago, but design prototype test, uh, Matthew, he, <laughs> he came up with a really similar mechanism with, with a bearing um, and just a friction fit. Um, and uh, I, we, we, we came up with that in parallel without knowing of each other's idea. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's funny. Also, I'm using a vibration dampener. I think I got that from a drone actually, and it, it really helps with, with, with noise, with print noise. Oh, by the way, check out, check out my cable management. I, I sleeved uh, most of the, the cables. The drive shaft is sleeved, the, the motor cable here is sleeved. I, I tried to keep the, the, the cables as, as tidy as possible, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't quite manage. Next, I want to tell you about uh, my heated bed. This is using the, the Wham Bam magnetic uh, build plate. I'm really happy with it. It's the, it's the PEX surface. I have no problems with adhesion. Pops off right away. Sitting on a five millimeter thick um, aluminum base plate to which uh, there's an 800 watt Kenovo uh, silicone heater attached, powered through AC. Here's the wiring um, from up there in the power supply. Uh, next, I want to put some focus on on these guys because I'm actually quite proud of them. Again, that's that's my own design. Um, they are uh, tensioners. Obviously, you know that. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I couldn't find any for the for the table little monster and the existing design was, was horrible. There was like a, um, an aluminum plate on top of here um, to which the, the, the roller was attached and you had to force that down with your, with your thumb on top. And uh, yeah, not nice. So here uh, you first screw down the base plate. Um, then the screw goes up into a nut in there and you can just tighten the whole assembly by by tightening the screw and then yeah you have a nicely tensioned tensioned belt those are by the way uh, nine millimeter uh, gates belts uh, yeah <laughs> probably a little bit overkill but uh, I'd rather have overkill than than uh, uh, floppy belts and uh, next I want to show you what's going on in the in the left pillar um, first, there is a, a 4K um, wide-angle uh, webcam. I got them from AliExpress for uh, around 100 euros, and I get a yeah. I, I see I see the whole build area actually. I think up until here on the side with with this camera, and I think maybe maybe this high, which is about half of the print volume actually. The print volume on my table monster is half a meter high, and this is 38 centimeters in diameter. Um, yeah, next to it, there's another webcam, uh, which uh, is not wide angle. Um, it's nice for a first layer analysis. Um, and then underneath, there are actually some NeoPixel LEDs, um, which I haven't hooked up yet. <laughs> I uh, I still need to do that. I was running the Duet 2 up until two months ago. And now with the Duet 3 Mini, I can actually control them properly. Um, yeah, but the wiring isn't done yet. So that's still on my list. Okay, next, I would like to show you the power supply. This cover, I already moved the screws. This plate here um, with a retrofitted Noctua fan. <laughs> you see the edges are well filed. <laughs> We have a 24 volt power supply um, here for the, well, <laughs> high power uh, print electronics. There is a five volt power supply um, that powers the Duet and the Raspberry Pi. Down here is the solid state relay that um, controls the, the heated bed. Um, this here, um, that's a, well, some Chinese companies uh, emergency power storage system it's so basically it's a couple supercapacitors in series um, so you get uh, to 24 volts and i think they are five farads but yeah if, if there's a power outage those will uh, actually keep the motors powered for uh, more than 10 seconds um, 
and on, on my delta, of course, if the motors are out of power, uh, the printhead will drop into the print and ruin it. Um, but I have those those brakes installed up here um, in, into which the, the printer sort of parks and they, they keep the carriages um, locked even if there's no power anymore. And uh, yeah, with this module, I actually do have enough uh, power capacity to to home my printer uh, during a power failure. <laughs> it's not like we get a lot of power failures here. Um, I live in the Netherlands and uh, the grid is pretty good here. Um, but yeah, nice, nice to have. Yeah, Wago, love those. Uh, this here, that's a relay, uh, goes to, to the Duet. Um, and this relay controls uh, power to the 24 volt power supply. Um, so if I turn on the printer, first five volt, powers up, uh, Raspberry Pi and the Duet starts. Um, and uh, once they're booted, the 24 power volt uh, power also comes on and uh, yeah, <laughs> that allows me to turn off the printer, for example, if the print is done. Yeah, one last detail I'm, I'm proud of are these, uh, these caps. Uh, they just go on here. Uh, they have some some fingers here that that clip onto uh, onto the screws, um, and yeah, so your fingers don't get in there. I mean, you probably won't get hurt, but it looks nice. And this is my logo actually. So uh, yeah, <laughs> also on Thingiverse <laughs> for all the people that still run the table little monster. So I just started the print. I I think my. Um, my hit print preparation sequence is interesting, so I would like to share that with you. I hope you can hear me over the noise of the printer. Um, but what I do first is I run the nozzle into the bed and then wipe. Um, that's to, to remove any residue on the printer, on the, on the nozzle. Uh, yeah, then the standard uh, auto calibration. Um, I think for me it's uh, seven points. Then the printer drives the nozzle into the print bed, that is to prevent uh, filament leaking out, because uh, all we just saw was actually at 160 degrees, which means the hot end is sort of on temperature already, uh, so is the bed. Um, and only now the, fill, uh, the hot end actually is ramping up to the final print temperature. Um, and yeah, that helps really well with reducing uh, blobs or, or smears on the on the print bed um, if, if anything rips out. So the printer is on temperature now. Um, so next it will uh, yeah draw a prime line and start printing. So I want to provide a little bit of commentary here about Nikolai's printer, and that is to say that it's um, it's exactly what I hope everybody that watches this channel does. And given the parameters of what Nikolai was trying to accomplish with that printer, I don't think I could have done much better myself. He's um, he's really done a top-notch job there, and um, the spirit of this channel is you know constant iteration and um, get those printers from China modify them, iterate them on, on them yourself so that you've learned everything about the printer. Like Nikolai shows some some really expert knowledge, like just top level mastery uh, with the like, for instance, the, the startup routine. That was really smart stuff there. I learned a thing or two uh, in that. So uh, you don't get that kind of knowledge without putting the time in. You have to, um, you know, question why everything on a printer has been put there, if it was a mistake by the manufacturer, if you can do it better yourself at home. And um, this is what I've been trying to kind of convey to everybody watching this channel. You guys, uh, I'm not standing up here pretending to be an expert, just handing you the knowledge. I've been trying to always show my process and get you all excited to do your own projects. And Nikolai has, has totally answered that call and I'm really proud of him. So uh, thank you so much for showing us that printer, Nikolai. Now, if you have a printer yourself that you've modified that's uh, you know cool, 
like Nikolai's or, you know, it doesn't have to be at that level. It can be a few levels down. It can be better. Whatever it is, I would love to see your custom printers and I would love to share them with everybody else who watches this channel. So reach out to me, uh, you know, the about tab on my channel. You should be able to find an email address and uh, you can send those uh, those video clips to me. I edited Nikolai's footage together. It didn't take him too long. He just had to sort of film the presentation on his cell phone, or I don't know if he was using his cell phone, but uh, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. So let's let's get the community involved here, and I, I want to see all of you guys' um, impressive DIY printers. Now, speaking of the community, and I hate that wording. We all know why, right? Because there's this other uh, company from uh, Eastern, or apparently technically Central Europe, although it was an former Eastern Bloc country, so I call it Eastern Europe, but uh, yeah, that company took their um, cult and they call it the community. So uh, the group of guys <laughs> who really like to modify printers uh, and tend to watch my channel, uh, we have a Discord uh, channel going now. So if you are into Discord, I'm gonna open this up to everyone and there'll be a link in the description for that. So go ahead and check that out. And yeah, so send me your videos about your printer and check out the Discord channel. And these are my Patreon supporters. Without them, of course, I would not be making videos. Thank you so, so much to these guys. And you'll notice that Nikolai is right there at the top of the list. And, and I wanna make it clear, in no way does his name being at the top of the list have anything to do with this video today. He just made a great printer and I would love to see great printers from everybody else as well. So. All right, that'll do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.